It's hard to believe that it's June 3rd right now, and I'm out here in a uh, down jacket and a winter hat. It's 43 degrees out right now, and um, the wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour, and it's really cold. It's kind of like the middle of March, not um, June. Anyhow, I got the finally got the tiller out. Everything's dried up enough to start trying to chop it up some. Had a little bit of a hard time getting the tiller going. It had some problems. A little pull cord on it when I went to start it. Pulled out and stayed out, so I had to take that apart and fix it. And you notice the front bumper is not on it anymore because I just kind of left that off because you had to take that off to remove that front housing. And then the fuel filter was plugged and the spark plug was shorted out, so... That was a little bit of work yesterday to get that running, but you know, once I got it started, this whole thing just puts right along and um, does its job, and you know, I think it'll keep going forever just about. So you can see I'm just starting to do the first couple passes in the garden here. It's really kind of like a, um, not really tilling right now, it's just kind of chopping up the mud as I go along, making the mud into big chunks here. And, you know, hopefully some air will get down in there and start drying it up and I'll go back over it in another day or two and uh, hopefully start to get a little finer powder out of the soil there. But for right now you can see it's really just um, just chunks of mud still. But I had to start so I didn't want to wait much longer and there's my little worm eater came down to kind of keep an eye on me and pick up a worm or two and you can see those bees are you know blowing pretty good the winds blowing and the four tomatoes and peppers and everything are taking a beating with all this wind lately but anyhow it's uh you know it's time to, to get the rest of the garden prepared here one of the things that always amazes me is I like last year I put down six inches of mulch on the whole garden and I just leave it there over the winter and you can see that basically it's all pretty much disappeared into the soil and um, just decomposed so that makes a tilling go real easy and you just can't beat one of these old tri-built horses for getting a job like this done um, and you know you can see it's really uh, you know just kind of a muddy mess right now but it'll dry up and there it is about an hour later the you know, the entire gardens had two passes over each area of it so I'll just let that dry and go back in a couple of days and now it's time to rip open that compost pile there the first thing I did though is um, I brought the hose out and put that out because I figure we're not gonna have any hard freezes from now on at least I'm hoping we don't so I've got to get ready for to start watering soon if the weather stays dry and then I brought down the little tractor I um, decided I was going to put those two boxes that I pulled out of the raised bed area just outside the garden here um, so it's kind of kind of a little hill there and stuff not really flat so you know, just a couple drags with the um, that little bucket on the tractor there to kind of try to level it out a little bit so that they at least sit level in there little compact tractor with a bucket on it is one of the handiest things that you can own if you have a piece of property to take care of so that was you know just like a 20 second job there to get that area leveled out and I'm just gonna set those two raised bed boxes in there and then I'm gonna fill them with compost from that compost pile that I'm gonna break open and you can pretty much see the winds really picked up now I think we've got like 30 mile an hour winds now and you know I just feel sorry for the poor pepper plants they just don't like this cold and wind so back to uh, you know getting these boxes full of compost now um, here you can see I just used a piece of wire fence here for this compost pile I started about three years ago and I just kept piling uh, vegetation and kitchen scraps and everything in it and you know I'd keep filling it to the top and a couple days later it'd be going down and you know it's just a matter of just keep filling it for a couple years and then last fall I decided to you know just stop and let it sit so I could break it open this year now I'm just cutting the the fence here to open it up I I did twist the wires around like you know I made a circle out of the fence and then just twisted the wire so easiest thing is just cut it off um, if I knew what was in it right there I'd uh, be wearing some pretty heavy gloves right now because uh, I did run across a couple of snakes that you'll see in a little while 
but you know basically I just cut all the, the wires on the fence there and um, it's just a piece of the same wire that I used around the garden so I'm just cutting it open there and uh, you know pulling back the fence so I can get at it I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just uh, wind it up again and um, you know make another pile in another section of the garden once I get this all cleared up and removed so now, you know, I've got some of this dry stuff that's on top that I'm taking off and just putting over in the other compost pile for now. Um, you know, if you don't have the moisture and stuff, it just won't decompose. And then um, my second pitchfork there, stuck it in and I noticed something was kind of wiggling in it. And I get over to the compost pile and there's about a two foot snake uh, that I speared with the actual pitchfork when I got that load there. Um, I did pull the pitchfork out and let it go, but it's not a garden snake. I don't know what it is. It's uh, And then I went over and looked, and there was another one there. You can see that I had just wounded a little bit. But that one took off in the grass and made out okay. Um, so I don't know. You know, the other one is still in the compost pile. I'll see if it shows up later. But I've never seen uh, such big snakes around here. Usually it's just tiny garter snakes that we have. So here it is. I'm gonna start moving the pile of compost, and um, you know that's what it looks like. It's like the the best compost you've ever seen, and um, absolutely no flipping or turning or messing with it. I just kept piling greens and um, organic matter in the compost pile, and there it is. That's what it looks like. Uh, you know, some people do turn their piles and stuff, but this one actually just. Uh, Somehow it had a ton of worms in it. The worms, I think, helped to decompose everything. But you can see it's just beautiful, rich compost there. So now I'm just going to bring around a couple bucket loads and fill up those two beds there. Um, thinking about maybe trying to plant a couple of those big pumpkin seeds in there or something. Try to get a couple big pumpkins. But for now I'm just going to you know, get them filled up and ready to plant. And again, you can just see how handy having a, a little loader is. It just uh, saves your back so much, especially as you get older. And in the end, I did. it looked like I had a little bit over two cubic yards of uh, compost in that pile that was six foot diameter there. And that, I mean, a load of that would have cost me, uh, it's 50 bucks a yard to get the pure compost like that, so it would have cost $100, so... You know, you can see how um, just saving all the, or just, you know, putting compost pile in and just putting all your garden waste in there and kitchen scraps in there can really save you a lot of money on fertilizer and stuff in the long run. Now I'm just digging it out of the pile as it is here. And um, there are some, you know, some chunks of the uh, harder organic material and stuff that probably could have used a little bit longer, but I'll pick them out anyway. And there you can see how uh, turf tires on a compact tractor don't really do anything but spin when you get in a little bit of mud there. So you really just have to just keep slowing down and slowing down until you finally get a grip on something and keep moving. Yeah, and there you can see there's still some, you know, a little bit of organic matter and some of the bigger branches and stuff mixed in there, but... Um, I'm just going to pick them all out in the end and put them back in the other compost pile and let them, you know, just rot away another year. And you can see I still have some wet spots and uh, muddy spots in the yard yet. But for the most part, it's getting dried up. So there's the, uh, the first box here. It's actually a little bit over full, but I just thought I'd show you how I'm just going to take a pitchfork and you know pick out any of the coarser stuff there and that all go back in the other compost pile for now but it's a uh, it's just like beautiful compost you can see and uh, no there was no work involved in getting it basically so in the end I will have these uh, two raised beds here that are going to be full of compost and I'll take some more of the compost and I might even sift it a little bit and put in the uh, raised bed area there and some of the ones up by the house. And then I'll just take the rest of what's left and just kind of spread it out in the garden and till that in next time I go over the garden. 
The good thing is it looks like we've only got about one more day of this cold weather coming and then it's going to start warming up again. Hopefully it won't, you know, this cold won't hurt the plants. Here we are back in just filling a wheelbarrow up with that stuff. And you can see it's just um, kind of like the the best dirt that you can get when you look at it for a garden. Just such a, um, you know, it did decompose well and um, really did come out nice. So I just thought I'd show you uh, how I make my compost and, you know, just how easy it is. Just a piece of wire fence is all it really takes and a couple of years for it to sit. And I pretty much, you know, got the garden here all started. I should be planting that sometime in the next week, I think, if it dries out. And I got this area starting to mulch it up with some of that cyclone rake mulch and these couple of new beds here to start planting now. And, you know, I'll get my butternuts and everything in the garden soon. And there's some sunflowers that came up just from last year's seeds that hit the ground. And uh, there's my compost pile this year. And I'm just going to let that uh, turn to a bin full of compost and use it for a raised bed next year, I think. That should grow some big veggies. In the meantime, I've been playing with that new Cameo 3. And uh, it's just a quick shot of the back of one of my first t-shirts that I came up with. Um, I thought I'd share with you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.